Welcome to the tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make tilt controls in GDevop. Now, tilt controls in GDevop are very simple. All you're going to need for this video is a mobile device and make sure that your mobile device has an accelerometer. Now, almost all mobile devices have an accelerometer, so this is not an issue. So if your tilt controls don't work, that means your device doesn't have just a accelerometer, but like I said, that's not really a problem. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is actually set up a scene that has a player that we can use to control the tilt. So I'm going to add a new object and this is going to be a sprite. I'm going to call this player. And for the player, I'm just going to import an image. Well, I'm going to import this image and I'm going to use some, one of my test pictures that I have. And it doesn't matter what picture you actually use, as long as the picture, it just matches a player. It doesn't really matter what you use for it. So I'm going to quickly go pick out my player, which is going to be not a black cube, but I'm going to pick out player. I'm actually going to make it a green cube. And that's our player here. And I'm going to delete that other one. I'm going to go into behaviors, add a behavior. And the behavior that we're going to use the platform character. Now, I'm not going to change anything here because it's not that important. I'm going to keep everything the same. I'm going to hit apply. Now, I'm going to add another object because now we need ground for our player. So I'm going to drag this player onto the scene. Add another object. I'm going to call this. This is also going to be a sprite. I'm going to name this ground. I'm going to once again import an image and this will be a black cube and for the ground all we have to do to make the player be able to stand on it is go into behaviors click into platform and you can keep everything the same except for these ledges we don't want that I'm going to drag the ground onto the scene and then I'm going to drag it out and I'm going to extend it out really long so to make sure our player doesn't fall off I'm going to extend it out and here we have it. It's extremely long, so we won't really have to worry about falling off. So now that we have that, if I preview the scene, you'll see that now we have a player. Now, of course, you can move it by arrow keys, but we're not going to be using that in the tutorial. We're going to be moving this player left and right using the tilting of a mobile device. So how do we do this? Now, the first thing we need to do is know how to access and look at the value of a mobile device's tilt. So I'm going to go into the events and add a new event. Now, for the conditions... The way that tilting is going to work, we want to check the tilt value. But how do we do that? So I'm going to go into add condition, other conditions, and device sensors. And I'm going to go into motion. And you'll see that we have this. Compare the value of acceleration. Now you see that we have x axis, y axis, and even the z axis. And I'm going to basically go into all of these axes a little bit later. But before we do any of that, we first of all need to make sure that the sensor of our mobile device is active. So I'm going to put, I'm going to add a condition, other conditions, and go into scenes, and I'm going to put where it has at the beginning of the scene. And now we want to activate the mobile sensors. So I'm going to add an action, go into other actions, device sensors, and we want to activate the motion sensor because we're not using the orientation sensor. That's not really useful for us right now, and most devices don't have these features. So we're going to go into activate motion sensor, and that's all that we need to activate the motion. Most times it's activated by default though. Now let's go into actually accessing the value. So I've gone to other conditions, and I go into device sensors, orientation, well not orientation, motion, and then compare, let's say to compare the value on Y axis. You'll see that we'll have, we're comparing the value of a Y axis in meters per second squared. So, you may think we can just make it so if we compare this value to something, or if we make sure that is equal to something, we can set off condition. Well, no. First of all, we don't know what the value of our acceleration is. Now, first of all, I'm going to explain something. I'm going to bring out a duplicate of the ground, and I'm going to stretch this out to make it look rectangular so you can have the idea that's kind of like a phone. And the acceleration on the y-axis it's the same thing as moving it like this, moving your phone like this. Imagine you're holding your phone up in the air because I can't really explain, of course, how it will look with a real phone. But imagine you ha you're holding your phone up in the air in landscape mode and you're tilting your device like this. This is the Y axis. So first of all, in order to be able to access this and make conditions that match with this, we need to be able to tell what is the value of our Y axis acceleration. So I'm going to add a new object and we're going to have a text object. And this is going to be called a cell. I'm going to call it a cell short for acceleration Y. And I'm going to make the size. It doesn't have to be that big, 30. And I'm going to put Y. This is the initial text, so we can just tell what it is in the editor. 
go ahead and drag it over here. And you might be wondering, how do we make a string? Uh, how do we make a text equal to our acceleration on the Y axis? I'm going to show you how. So for we're going to put always condition. So we're going to delete this condition right here. And we're going to put always. So that means we leave it blank. I'm going to add an action. We're going to click into a cell Y and we want to modify the text. So we're going to click text and we want to set this always equal to and we want to, first of all, make sure that we include our initial value, which is Y, showing that's Y. I'm going to put a space here. And then we want to concatenate another string. So I'm going to put plus, and then I'm going to put two string because we're converting a number to a string because our acceleration value is a number. And you might be wondering, how do we access this? So we want to put device. I'm going to put device sensor. And you'll see device sensors. And what we want to ask is the acceleration y. So auto complete this, I'm going to put tab. And here we have it. And I'm going to hit OK. Now, I cannot test this out with you in the video, but I have tested all of these conditions and they do work. But I do know how you can connect your phone. You may be wondering, how am I going to test this out on my phone? Well, the way that you would do this is you'll go into this drop down menu next to preview, and then you'll put start a network preview over land continue anyway and you'll see that you'll have this code and you'll have a qr code now before you do anything don't just immediately scan this you should download firefox first because gdevelop has a known issue that when it comes to trying to test out games in the preview google chrome for some reason doesn't allow you to tilt control to use motion control so what you're gonna have to do is go to google play or go to the apple app store and you want to download Firefox first. And then once you download Firefox, you'll be able to scan this QR code or type it in your web browser. And then it will work for sure. So make sure you do that first. Now, when you open up, I'm going to be guiding you. When you finally do all these steps, you type the code in. And of course, your code is going to be different from mine. But you type this code in. You want to tap the screen first and put your phone in landscape mode as well. But you should see a value that's changing. And as you rotate your device like this, I'm going to once again show this up as a fake phone. When you rotate your device like this, you should see your value changing between 0, well, not 0, between 1 and 10. So another thing is you'll see that it will be a decimal value. So in order for us to have it more simple, we want to round this value instead of just having it the exact value. So I'm going to put two string. I'm going to put another parenthesis here, round. And I'm going to put just another parenthesis at the end. Two string, round. And we want to round device sensor, which we already did. So I'm going to hit OK, and that should work. You should be able to round it out like that. And now that the value is rounded, everything should be fine. Now, how do we actually make the player move by tilting? Now, this is very, very easy. Now, I want to show you once again, when you tilt an object to the right like this, your acceleration Y value will go up when you tilt it to the right. And when you tilt it to the left, your acceleration value will go, will go to, to the negative values. So how do we actually want to do this? So I'm going to put Shift A and add a new condition. I'm going to add a condition. I'm going to go into other conditions. Now, you may be tempted to do this. You want to go into device sensors, motion, and you may be tempted to compare the value of the y axis and like let's say put this is less than if it's less than five you may be tempted to do that and trigger a command but the thing is like weirdly this is an issue with gdevelop for some reason when you try to do it this way it doesn't work it doesn't work but there's a workaround around this what you want to do is you want to compare two strings so I'm, or two numbers so i'm going to go into events and control flow and compare new two numbers. Now the first number that we want to compare is our actual device rotation. So what we're gonna do is put, I'm going to put device, and you'll see device sensors, I'm gonna put acceleration Y. And now we want to put check if it's less than, if it's less than or equal to negative five. If it's less than or equal to negative five, we want to move the object to the left. And the way that we do this, this is a player. So we want to simulate the left key press like this. So put simulate left key press. 
And we can do a similar thing for making the player move right. So I'm going to put copy. I'm going to put paste. And instead of putting less than or equal to, I'm going to put greater than or equal to. And instead of simulating left, I'm going to simulate right. And of course, once again, now you can test this out. But what should be happening is your player should be moving to the right if you tilt your phone to the right. And your player should be moving to the left if you tilt your phone to the left. And once again, you can use that debug value on that Y text so you can understand how far you need to tilt your phone. And that's how you do tilt controls in GDevelop. Now, those are the basics of it, but there is a little bit more you can do with it. But it's not that useful. I won't be going over this tutorial, but I will be mentioning it. Now, I'm going to go into add conditions and other conditions. You'll notice that we have in the motion, we'll have acceleration X and we'll have acceleration Y. Now, you can make tilt controls based on these as well. But what I want to show you is how these work because it can be kind of hard to visualize how the rotating actually works. So I'm going to get a 3D object so I can represent this better. I'm going to add a new object and I'm going to add a 3D box. And I'm going to make sure that we use the black cube as the face for all of these for the 3D box. I'm going to fill these in real fast. And we're going to keep it like this. So I'm going to drag this onto scene and I'm going to stretch it out so it can kind of look like a phone. And the way that works, I've already discussed that. Of course, this is the acceleration Y when you rotate like this. That controls the acceleration Y. Now, what controls the acceleration X? What controls the acceleration X is not this rotation. It's this rotation. As you can see, let me set this as zero. As you can see, when I make this value go up it starts rotating upwards and that's the acceleration x and it looks like we forgot to put a face over there let me put a face i can't stand not having well it looks like we didn't forget to put a face we just forget to show it okay so either way this is the rotation x and it's the same thing for your phone and if you want to access the z this is how a z rotation will look it'll start moving Kind of like that yeah like this not like that let me set this to zero this is how a z rotation will look a z rotation will look like this on your for your phone in real life so basically that's how you control the z acceleration and the x acceleration that is how you do tilt controls in gdevolt the reason why i covered this one because this is the common thing that people use for racing games when you're tilting it like this and this can be really fun for your game and can add just a lot of extra flair to your game, especially for mobile players. So I, once again, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss on any of my videos. And also, if you want to support the channel even more, also consider becoming a member. It has a few special perks that you can get as well as this just $0.99 a month that helps support the future of the channel and helps me keep going and just show that you all love the content. But also, those my shout outs will be in the description to all of the members at the moment. But once again, if you enjoyed this video, also comment down below what tutorials you would like to see next. Preferably 3D, but it can be 3D or 2D. Anything game development related that you will all like to see in the future. But once again, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. See ya.